Hey, Working Family, this is Will with the Cardboard Minute. Today I will be playing Wingspan, designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Stonemeyer Games. Uh, I will go through a rules explanation of how to play both the multiplayer and the solo variant, as well as a, I'll play through a single solo player game and give my review at the end. All right, so let's get started. All right, so over here we have these cards all over the side are for the solo game. You can ignore those if you're playing multiplayer. Give each player eight cubes of the color of their choice, a player mat, two objective cards, one of which they will keep and the other they will discard, and five cards randomly, and a resource of each type. We have a bird feeder for resources, uh, some eggs, another supply of food, and three random cards from the deck. Now, before you start, you will have to choose one of your different objective cards. Uh, the objective cards usually have a description on the top and then the point value you will get based on different criteria. Uh, and occasionally, um, there will be a couple different choices. And sometimes at the bottom, there will be a percentage value showing you how many cards in the deck meet that, um, fulfill that uh, description. Uh, so, for example, here, birds that live only in the forest. If I have three to four birds, I get four points. And 24% of the cards have that. So you have to choose one of those. And from your starting hand, you will have to discard a resource for each bird you want to keep. All right, when it's on your turn, you are going to take one of your cubes representing your different actions, and you'll place it on your board on the action you want to take. So, for example, here I want to play a bird. So that's the top little sliver of actions along the top here. In order to do so, I will have to take a bird from my hand. Uh, I'm just going to use the ones in display as an example here. For example, I want to play this woodpecker. I can only play it in the forest region, which is here we have forests, plains, and wetlands. It can only go in the forest region. Some birds may go in multiple regions. There will be a resource cost. Here I can choose between worm grains or fruit and then I'll have to pay that for my resources and place the card in the furthest left spot in the, in the corresponding land type. If there are already birds there I'd have to spend an egg on top of the food cost or if there's multiple birds the cost increases in eggs. Another action I could take is gathering food from the forest. You always place a cube in the furthest left available open rectangle box area. That shows the action you can take. So here it is gaining one die or one resource from the bird feeder. So maybe here I'll take the worm die and take a corresponding worm from the resource supply. If there were cards filling up this row, my actions will actually get stronger. And so this is kind of the goal of the game, is to get more and more out. So now I can take two different die from the bird feeder. If at any point there is only one die, uh, sorry, one food type left in the bird feeder, you may choose to reroll all the dice, or if the bird feeder is empty, then you immediately refi refill all the dice. After you've taken that action, your cube will progress to the left, and if there's any birds of activations, those will happen. Birds come in a few different major types. We have birds with a, like a white box, which is generally a when this bird is played, there will be a one-time effect. Birds with a pink box will activate when it is not your turn, but only once kind of in between your turns. So this is things that the other players are doing. It could get you uh, some sort of bonus. And then we have the brown, border, uh, brown box cards here that will activate when you move your cube onto them from taking action in the corresponding area. And these also come in a couple different types. We have cards with the little skull and crossbones symbol, which means that they are trying to eat another bird. So you'll draw a random card off the top of the deck. And if it meets the requirements, so for example here at the Falcon, if it has a wingspan, shown the top in the bottom right corner here, less than 100 centimeters, you'll tuck this card. So see if I drew the woodpecker, He'd be eaten and tucked below the falcon. Each 
tuck card will be worth a point at the end of the game. Some birds also will look at, uh, will be gaining resources in different ways. Some uh, may add to your, your collection, but if it says to cash the resource, then the resource will get placed on top of the bird. You may not spend that resource in future actions, but it is worth a point at the end of the game. Some birds also will allow you to lay eggs, which can be placed on any bird as long as it is not surpassing the egg requirements. So again, on the card, we have land type, resources required to play it, the size of the bird. We have a, a number and a feather here that is end game points. You want more feathers, the better. We have a nest type, which is in a little circle here, which we'll be looking at with some of the scoring objectives and egg symbols showing how many eggs this card may hold. Eggs are worth one point each at the end of the game. So, and they also have, you have to spend eggs to play more birds. So generally it's good to have eggs. Uh, next action set. Oh yeah, so I'll also show that uh, depending on the action, you could choose to discard a card to gain a resource. The planes actions is placing two eggs on any combination of birds. Or if you get up to the next action, for example, if birds are filling up your tableau, you can also spend one resource for an additional egg. Uh, I should mention that you can always spend two resources to match a resource that you're missing. And the last action is drawing a card. Optionally also, if it's available, spending an egg to draw an additional card. When you're drawing cards, you can either choose from the display or from randomly off the top. And the display will refill at the end of your turn. And at the end of the round, the display will get cleared and new cards will come out. You'll play until all of your cubes are done. And then you'll be looking over at the round objective scoring. Uh, there are two sides to this board. The green side is good if you want a little more interaction play between players, because you will be comparing who has the most of certain things for points. Whereas the opposite, op opposite side has uh, a blue background. And that shows that um, anyone can gain points based on certain actions that you do. Some of the different objectives that can be tied to the round. For example, we have eggs in rocky nests, eggs in the forest area, different birds in the plains, or specific type of birds with a specific type of nest, but also have at least one egg. So some of those can be quite challenging. On to the solo play. Uh, here we have a different round tracker, which shows how many kind of bonus um, additional points of objective that the, um, not points, but uh, additional kind of meter towards scoring objectives that the, the AI will have. For example, the first one, eggs and nests, they will have one additional of that type, along with any other cubes that will add to that action. There is a randomly selected endgame scoring bonus, which they will not score. This will just help them to choose which type of birds they want from the supply. A round tracker and a couple of reminder to cards. During the AI's turn, you'll flip over a card, line it up with the round tracker, and then do the action shown. Some of the actions available are removing all the cards from the supply, and then drawing a random card and placing it face down. The Atoma or the AI will score any face up birds based on their feather value, but any face down birds based on your difficulty level. You can play easy, medium, or hard, scoring three, four, or five points respectively. Then we have uh, take all birds from the display that match their objective and keeping the highest valued one face up, a ganging egg gaining a resource, uh, and actually you'll take all resources of one type from the bird feeder, and the priority is shown from left to right on the card. We have placing a cube on the current round's gold tile, uh, and that will increase their, their ability to, to uh, beat you at that gold. Remove a cube, that kind of represents them maybe spending an egg to, take in a, to uh, place a new bird or activate all pink powers on birds that you have. The AI player does not need a board of their own, and uh, nor they will they pay resources for anything. 
there's also a more difficult card that you can shuffle into, the, into their deck called the Ottoman Bond Society that will uh, allow them to score more cards and more objectives. So add that in if you want an even greater challenge. Also, at the end of each round, there are certain cards that are labeled with things like remove after round one. So don't forget to do that in between rounds as well. Uh, you'll be first player, and let's begin. So let's see what, what cards I have here. Okay, so I have uh, birds in your habitat with the fewest birds. So that wants me to spread out my objectives a little bit. Or birds that only live in a forest. Okay, I already have one. And there's another one here. Oh, and these kind of combo because it'll let me to play a second bird uh, at normal cost. So let's discard the colleges and keep the forester. And uh, let's see, I'm going to keep the tough tit titmouse because it'll let me combo additional birds. And maybe let's keep the sparrow because he'll let me get kind of lots of eggs out at once. So I'll discard the rest. I have to discard a resource for each card that I will keep. Let's get rid of the mouse and the fish. And then we'll begin. Uh, I'm first player. And you know, I, I really want that woodpecker because he'll combo well with the, with the, uh, the tuft titmouse. So let's uh, draw a card. I can take the woodpecker and then cube slides down, turns over. Oh, another one, a chickadee. Okay, the AI is going to flip over a card here. They are going to draw any card that matches their objective, which there is one, the falcon. Uh, so they will gain that one face up. Oh, I really want that chickadee. Maybe, I don't think I'm going to let them get away with that. So I'm going to take another card draw action and gain the Madam Chickadee. So I might be able to combo those a bit. Uh, all right, next. They will be wiping all the birds here. Getting a random one from the top and adding it to their collection of cards. And then let's reveal some new ones. Ooh, the Cardinal. Oh, that one's good too. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna be wasting a lot of my, oh yeah, and they add a, a cube here. I feel like I'm gonna be wasting a lot of my turn getting these things, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna draw that one too. That's, that's also a good one. Uh, all right, next, the gang an egg which will also count as points in the game for them. And I need to start getting some food and some things out here. Uh, oh, and eggs, I need eggs. So let's uh, start with a sparrow. Um, so I'm gonna play a bird. This is gonna cost me a worm and a green. All right, next they are getting another egg and removing a cube from their objective. All right, I'm gonna need a lot of food if I wanna combo these things. So let's get some food here and I will take, uh, I'll take the grain. All right, oops, I never did refill that. Okay, they are going to be wiping all cards and drawing a random top one and removing a cube, which they don't have. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to combo this all in one turn. Uh, I am going to, in fact, go back for more resources, grab a worm. Okay, they are going to be taking all the mice and activating pink cards, which I don't have any. Uh, we're getting kind of close to the end here. Um, I think I'm going to grab, you know, I'm going to grab another worm. I'm going to need some worms. If I want to combo all these birds. All right, next they are going to take the fruits. And let's re-roll all of the resources. Put them in there. 
And last turn, he is going to be scoring eggs in nest that type. So let's go ahead and place a couple of eggs in here. And I would be activating the brown bird, but there's no other birds to lay eggs on. So that goes down. And the guys can take their last turn. They're going to be drawing birds from the supply, which there is another one that matches their criteria. And that's the end of the round. All right, so next, now let's look at the end, uh, the, the round scoring objectives. I have two bird uh, eggs in Rocky Ness, and the AI, according to their round tracker, has one. So I will gain the first place, and they'll take the second. All right, so in between rounds, let's dig through their deck and remove the remove after one round cart. Shuffle up and rotate this to show that we're on round two. I get all my cubes back and they are going to go first. Um, first player try, moves to them. And the, oh, yeah, and we get new, new birds. All right, these got to cycle every round. We get a warbler, an oriole, and a blue jay. Okay, they are going to wipe all the cards. Okay, so much for those. Wood Stork, Black Crown Night Heron, and Eastern Bluebird. Okay, do I have enough to combo and play these all at once? Probably just three of them. One, two, three, four. I think I can do it. Okay, let's go to play a bird. I can start with the woodpecker, which is going to cost me a worm. That lets me play a second bird uh, in, in the forest at no additional at normal cost. So I'll play the tuft titmouse. He's going to cost me an egg now and another worm. And he lets me play another bird. So I'm going to play the northern cardinal, which is going to cost me another egg. And a wheat, or a grain, and a fruit or uh, berry, and there, I just did three birds at once, that was pretty good. Okay, next, they're going to, oh, you know what? Yep, uh, green two eggs, remove any cubes they have, which is none. Back to my turn. Uh, I think I'm gonna need some resources this time. So let's go up here. Now I'm getting two resources at once. So let's grab a worm and a grain. And then move down, getting a berry from the supply, and then nothing and nothing. We have round two, uh, they'll be looking for birds of their preferred type. There is none, so they'll get a random one. They will add a cube to the objectives. Now, what is their current status? So this is eggs in forests. They count as having three already, so now four. I, I'm gonna need to catch up a little bit with that. So yeah, let's uh, play some eggs. There's two eggs. And down, and then I can lay an egg on another bird. So yeah, I'm gonna keep stacking up my forest of eggs here. All right, next, they're going to wipe cards, get a random one face down, and they're gonna be putting a cube on this round. So technically they have five now, that's, that's not great. Okay, let's do some more eggs. So two more eggs. Oops. And then the sparrow is going to put another egg. So I am just loading up these cards. All right, next they are getting two more eggs. Oh, and another cube. round is getting uh, pretty pretty rough for me so so far they have 
uh, let's see, three, five, six, seven, they have, oh, sorry, three, four, five, six. So it counts as six eggs right now, which is just what I'm at. So I can't let them get away with that. Let's, <laughs> let's put more eggs. One, oops, oh, come back, come back. And two, and then another egg. So now I have, I have a three egg lead on them, that should be good. All right, they're gonna draw a bird of their preferred type, which there is one. And I'm still currently in the lead. Let's uh, go a little further here. Uh, I'm going to play another bird, so it's going to cost me two eggs because uh, I'm placing another forest bird, and it's going to cost me um, a worm to go there. All right, next. Ah, two more eggs. Oh my gosh, they're just gaining points constantly. And remove a cube. Makes it a little bit easier for me. But I'm still going to spend my last turn putting eggs out. So one, two, move down, and one more. All right, and I'm the last player because of uh, the AI, AI went first. So now let's look at scoring. I have a nine, 10 eggs in the forest, and they have three, four, five. So. Huge win for me, but they still bleeding in second place. All right, let's clear off the next rounds. We'll move some cards. Oops. And we gotta go digging for the round two card. Uh, okay, we'll move after round two. So now we're going to be looking at birds in the plains, which I only have one right now. It's probably not ideal. Uh, and they, uh, let's see, birds in plains, they have an automatic two. Hmm. Okay, I don't know if I can catch up that well. Okay, well, I'm first player. We have two resources. What do I have that works in the plains? Not a lot of birds available. Let's, uh, maybe let's gain some resources here. So, okay, I can take three resources. I'm gonna take a worm, a wheat, and then, um, do I wanna fish you? I'll take the fish. And then move down, getting a weed from supply, but cash it on the card, which again, that means I can't use it, but it's points. Getting a berry from the supply. And move down. Okay, we are at round three. So let's see here. They're going to, okay, wipe all the cards. And getting a random one. Uh, and remove any cubes in the current round, which there are none. So let's see, is there any of those I want? There there are some yellow birds, or some uh, plains birds, which could be good. Ooh, the dark-eyed jungle could be good. The roadrunner is worth a lot of points. Uh, and don't really have the resources for him, but I could get them pretty easily. He doesn't eat huge birds though. But uh, seven points. Oh, you know what? And he's good for the end of game, the, for the very last scoring objective. So let's draw him. I'm going to put him in my hand. All right, next. Round three. He's going to look for his preferred bird type. There are none. So a random card and a cube. Uh, okay, I need a mouse for this, but 
Do I want to draw more resources first or just spend extra? Hmm. I mean, I get like four resources at a time. And a point whenever I do that. So, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's, uh, let's just... Let's just spend it. So I'm going to spend a uh, an extra wheat, and yeah, I'm going to spend two berries for the wild, uh, so for, to replace the mouse and the wheat and the worm, and place the roadrunner. So I got I got two birds in there now. All right, draw, and they are wiping the cards again. Where the AI likes to do that. Oops, now it's face down. I mean, it's a lot of points for them. They're getting like three or four points per round. It's crazy. Okay, next. Ooh, the California quail. Yeah, let's. Uh, it's not good for end game scoring, but he's. Good for here. So I'm going to grab him. And I move down. All right, next we have two eggs and a cube. Okay, I need to go fishing for resources here. So let's draw three resources. I'm going to take a worm, wheat, and Maybe a mouse. Uh, and then we're going to move down, getting wheat from supply and cash it, getting a berry, and all the way down. Okay, next. Three eggs. Holy moly, this thing is just points like crazy. Three eggs, remove a cube. Okay, now I need to play some birds. So we're going to play this action, spend an egg. And we're going to spend the worm and two wheat in order to place it here. All right, next, uh, grab its elected preferred bird type from the selection. There is none, so we'll get a random and a cube. Uh, so what are they at now? They are at two, three, four birds that, in that type. So it's going to be kind of hard to catch them since I have one cube left. So since I can't, I'm just going to go for eggs, egg points. Uh, I'm going to spend a berry for the additional egg. And then, so that's three more eggs on top of that. Let's road, load up my rotor runner first since he's the objective. And then, I guess it doesn't really matter after that. Uh, okay, when activated, lay an egg on this bird. It's great. Uh, when activated, look at the top bird from the deck. If it has less than 50 centimeter wingspan, tug it. Yes, yum, 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 yum. The rotor runner catches the birds, and then lay an egg on any bird. Let's keep filling up the top here. Okay, so that's a fair number of points. Uh, and then last turn for the AI, they're going to get a resource. And they're going to take a berry. And I have no pink cards. Okay, so that is the end of the round. Uh, unfortunately, I think they've won the objective with four. So they're going to have a cube here. And I do have second place. So, yeah, what is that? Remove all my cubes. Wipe. New cards. And we're going to go into the last round here. Uh, okay, so first I got to remove the remove in round three cards. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And the AI is going to be first. All right, what are we doing? 
the mooring dove would be great if I can get it. Okay, so around four, they are drawing three eggs. I'm gonna have to get my extra, the rest of the eggs out of the box. I'm running low here. And a cube on the objective. And now, you know what, I want that. I want that bird. I'm gonna draw that card, move down. Okay, oops, these are backwards. Okay, it'll take a resource. Um, they're gonna take the fish. I'm gonna re-roll. Okay, I need, I need to do wheat for this one. So I'm actually just gonna spend two random ones to make a third, uh, to make the wheat. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna combo up here. Let's uh, get rid of these two eggs and place it here. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, round four, another cube and three eggs. All right, I had to grab the extra, the rest of the eggs from supply because I'm running out of here. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be using this main. Uh, all right, so they've added a whole pile of more eggs. I am going straight for the egg laying action. So this is four eggs. We're gonna just gonna load every bird up the max here. Uh, move down, lay an egg on this bird. Move down, lay an egg on this bird. Move down, 150, yes, yum, 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 chickadee. Actually, there are, there are lots of chickadees around here in, uh, in Ottawa. There's some nice hiking trails where the chickadees will come. They'll eat bird seed right out of your hand. You can feel them kind of walking around in your hands. It's really cute. All right, lay an egg on a bird. Let's um, go ahead and put one over here. And then down. All right. Oh, I never did replace this card. All uh, right, the AI is going to try to draw their preferred card. There is none, so face down. Oh my gosh, look at the stack of cards. I am hoarding eggs again. I may not have any space to put eggs for long. Two, three, four. Yeah, okay, let's see here. So one there. One, two, three. Lay an egg on this bird. Lay an egg on this bird. I'm actually going to uh, run out of places to put eggs. Draw a card. Uh, he is under the size required. Lay an egg on any bird. And off. Yeah, I'm going to be in a tight spot here because I can't play any more birds because I'd have to draw, get resources, and play them. Yeah, oh well. Let's see, draw around four, they're getting three more eggs. Remove the cube. What is their scoring objective anyhow? Okay, so this is Uh, so they get three additional. So they're at four right now. I have one, two, only two birds that meet that requirement. Well, that's too bad. So, yeah, I'm essentially going to run out of actions before them. But, yeah, okay. Four eggs. I think I'm going to be maxed out now. Let's see, so he's maxed. Yeah, this, well, he's maxed and he's maxed. So I actually can't fit any more. Oh, that one's too much. I actually can't fit any more eggs. Hmm. Uh, can't do it, can't do it. Go hunting. All right, yum, 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 nut, nut hatch. Nut off. Okay, and the last turn for the AI, he's going to 
Draw a random card, wipe the markets. Yeah, I should probably put more eggs, more of our birds first before I try this. Uh, and I'm just gonna get resources because that's the tiebreaker. Uh, let's take those three. Uh, and then this one's still with a point because I get a wheat from the supply. And then getting a berry from the supply. Yeah. And that is the end. So now let's compare the objectives. They have four, I only have two. So I get second place. And then let's go on to final scoring. All right, so final score, I had 23 points in birds. They, I had 51. I mean, like the amount of cards they drew is just insane. Uh, I have four points from bonus cards. My uh, my four birds in the forest. Uh, we each scored 16 points in the end goals. Uh, I had 28 eggs. Yeah, I had 22. I had three points on cards, four tuck cards. So it came to a final score of uh, 78 for me and 89 for the AI. Uh, I, yeah, I felt like I had a couple of rounds wasted because I just wasn't able to activate my egg laying engine. Maybe if I had some birds that had more space on them, or if I, or if I, probably if I had put down a, like at least one more bird before I started going crazy with eggs, right? Like if I'd spent a couple rounds earlier, put something out like the purple galanul, probably would have gotten me, yeah, that would have been another 11 points. That would have been enough to, uh, to at least tie it. Um, so anyways, that is, the game, let's head back up and I'll give my review. All right, and that is Wingspan. Uh, so the, the AI, uh, I'll cover that first since my thoughts are on it, uh, is fairly simple to operate, but uh, boy, the getting points pretty fast. Uh, kind of looking back at scores from different games that I've played, maybe they were, they were just lucky this round, this game on a uh, medium, but, um, They've scored pretty much on par with what my wife scores, and uh, she she whoops me at this game all the time. So, uh, I mean, I guess it's a it's a pretty good challenge, even on normal difficulty. And there's even higher difficulties after this. I feel like you may have to get a little bit lucky with birds uh, in order to beat it sometimes, but that's fine. Like it it stays competitive. Um, it doesn't really interact with you directly but it uh, does kind of randomize how it grows a little bit, it keeps the market fresh. So uh, it works, I do recommend uh, the solo AI. Yeah, I think it does what it sets out to accomplish, which is uh, have an opponent that plays variably and uh, gives you some challenge to beat. Uh, so as for a review of the game itself, uh, first, uh, well, we have to address components. Um, the, the game is like many of the Stonemaier games, just fantastic components. You know, the cards are nice quality. Yeah, the eggs are like lovely little eggs that have little flat bottoms so they don't roll around everywhere. You know, boards are nice quality. Comes with this cute little dice tower that's totally unnecessary, but I mean, it's a, it's a fun little centerpiece that uh, people can look at. You know, dice are these nice chunky wooden dice. And uh, you know, the box, the rule book, everything is just great quality as expected from uh, from Stillmeyer. It is uh, certainly worth um, your money from the, that standpoint alone. Uh, and the little tree that holds the cards and stuff is also very useful. I don't think it will fit expansions, but I don't know any expansions. I'm pretty happy with the base game here. Uh, although I do hear the expansions are quite excellent if you're looking for more. Uh, in terms of the, the gameplay itself, uh, I think this is uh, what you would call kind of a, a next step game. Uh, you know, if you are getting into the hobby and you found a couple games that you like already and are looking for looking for more, uh, looking for something uh, a little more challenging or maybe just the bird theme draws you in, then I, I would highly recommend jumping onto Wingspan. Uh, it is a smooth enough play that you feel like the game uh, kind of constantly moves, so the turns don't take very long. 
So uh, like it comes back around to your turn before long. Um, I don't think I would play, I don't know if the expansion adds five or not, but four players is, is still a long-ish game, but for what you do and, and accomplish during the game, I think that the length is, is probably just about right. There's enough variability in the objective cards and in different birds that come out that uh, you're not going to see the same game twice. And, and there are a number of different strategies uh, to victory as well. Um, you know, I had a pretty heavy egg laying strategy this time. Uh, but I mean, you can go for, for card tucking and resource gathering, and there's lots of things you can do to get points in this game. And, and I think they're all pretty valid too. Uh, the actions are very simple to explain. And uh, although the game does ramp up in complexity as you get more and more birds on the table, uh, I think it is, it is simple enough to explain to people that uh, it, it is, it's a pretty smooth teach, um, you know, like I said, I can get my wife to play this uh, and she enjoys it quite a bit. And uh, even if she hasn't played it for a while, um, you know, the rules come back quite easily. And, uh, and with that, the uh, end game scoring objectives do change things a bit. And I like the fact that there is the opposite blue side that makes the objectives a little more friendly. So if you are playing with someone who is not very competitive, then uh, you can switch over to that side. Uh, in terms of the the engine building, uh, you know, is, is quite a bit fun. Iconography is clear, so you can pretty easily see what's going to happen when you want it to happen. And you do feel a, a great progression of cards growing and getting stronger, your actions getting stronger, both because they're filling up your, your board, giving you access to stronger actions, but you can't forget the different brown cards that get activated each time you take those. Uh, you know, even though I was only doing uh, four eggs on like the prairie egg laying action, it was giving me three additional eggs on top of that. Plus, I could occasionally tuck a bird card in as well for, <clears throat> for additional points. So the, the comboing and, and stuff is, is quite cool. Uh, I mean, I did save up and lay down like three forest birds all at once uh, in the start of the second round anyways. And uh, so there's, there's definitely some things to work towards. Card drawing is fairly fairly tight though. So unless you're, you're playing more cards towards... Uh, towards that objective, you may just not get the things you need or, um, you know, for your objective, but you can kind of gauge that based on the percentages at the bottom. You can kind of see how hard it would be to get that, right? Like the AI had the Falconer, which is uh, only 13% of cards. So, you know, if you chose that, you would kind of see that ahead of time, that uh, it's maybe not gonna be the easiest objective to get and gauge your, your experience accordingly. So uh, I, I highly recommend this game. Um, you know, please, uh, you know, take a look for it. You, know, you can, it comes into stock pretty regularly, so I would not jump on any kind of scalper prices on Amazon or whatever. Just wait for it to come back in stock at your local game store or online game store. Um, they, they comes back into print fairly often. I myself had to, to wait a couple months before um, a, a different print run came out when it was first released. Um, but it's, it's probably enough it's gonna keep coming back. Uh, there's also a, an app that was made for this game that is uh, non-official. Um, I'll put a link in the description, I believe it's called Birdsong or something. And uh, what the fans have done is they have taken the audio recordings of the various birds from uh, the Audubon Society and have built an app that'll let you using the camera in the app, scan a card, and then it makes the sound that that bird makes. Uh, and even, I mean, it's, it's totally has no impact on the gameplay, but it's just super fun because the, you know, the theme of the birds is, is fairly unique. The fact that there's beautiful illustrations, uh, I believe from Beth Sobel, of each of the, of the birds um, and also a little bit of information about them. Uh, you know, there's, you know, the flavor is definitely there. The, uh, the types of nests that they, they create or where they like to live, habitats they like to live, things they like to eat, uh, are all fairly well researched. And, and even though, 
you know, this was, you know, built very mathematically to be a, a mathematically sound game and, and engine. Uh, you know, it, they, I think I think it works for uh, they they found a theme that goes with it, and have been able to dress it up to the point where it's not just math anymore. Now the numbers make sense. So uh, do take a look. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know uh, you know if you get to see a lot of birds in person. We uh, do a lot of hiking with scouts, so we get to see. Uh, different birds like chickadees and things around here we have blue jays and cardinals and uh, and though I, though I am not a birder specifically uh, i don't spend a lot of time watching birds uh, i think it's delightful to look and see uh, you know a woodpecker um, you know digging in a tree nearby or uh, or different things while i'm on a hike in the woods uh, so thanks for liking and subscribing and uh, we'll see you later